What is the best finishing temperature for briskets to be considered done? I'm a big fan of taking briskets to slightly undercooked, around 195 internal, and then I hold them a really long time at 150 degrees to finish them off. But a lot of people have been telling me that I am wrong. The argument goes that all of the best pitmasters in Texas are taking their briskets to tenderness. Then they rest them down and they put them in the holding oven overnight before serving them the next day. And what do I know? I'm just a Canadian. Well, I tell you what, bud, we can cook some damn good queue up here beyond the wall, and we invented peanut butter. You're welcome. But in case those credentials aren't good enough for you, I'm gonna do an experiment so you can see the results with your own eyes. To be specific, I'm going to cook two briskets to two different finishing temperatures. One is gonna be slightly undercooked at 195, and one is gonna be probe tender at 200 degrees, and we'll see whether I'm wrong and I need to change the way that I cook briskets. And to raise the stakes and prevent me from just BSing you with my own biased opinion, I'm going to get my own mother, Nona Josie, to blind taste test both briskets and tell me which one she likes the best. So let's get smoking. Let's talk about brisket finishing temperature. And I know that a lot of you want to know the exact temperature to finish a brisket to that results in the perfect brisket every single time and I get that sentiment. But this is a really difficult topic because a brisket is generally considered done when it gets tender, not when it gets to a certain temperature. And that tenderness is going to depend on the brisket itself, its size, its collagen content, its fat content. It's gonna depend on your smoker, how good the airflow is, how evenly it cooks the meat, the humidity in your smoker. It's gonna depend on your technique, i.e. the time, the temperature, whether you wrap it, whether you hold it. All of these variables are dialed in at a barbecue restaurant. So the experienced pit masters know exactly what a brisket is supposed to feel like when it's perfectly tender. But even then, it's really hard. In Aaron Franklin's book, Franklin Smoke, he even mentions that he, barbecue Jesus himself, even struggles to identify perfect tenderness when he hasn't been cooking for a while. And it takes him a couple dozen briskets to get that magic touch back. So thank you, Aaron Franklin, for being honest. There are so many people out there that are like, I can tell when a brisket is done just by sensing it. Na, 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 na. That one's done. That one's undercooked. That one needs more time. Bullsh**. Even the best of the best get it wrong sometimes, and it takes a ton of experience to get that feeling. It is hard, guys, and don't let anyone tell you any differently. So to help simplify things, I use a method that involves pulling the brisket off at 195 when it's slightly undercooked, and then I hold it for 18 to 20 hours at 150 in a holding oven, and that slowly over time evens out the tenderness and gets me the results that I want. Quick PSA, the methods that you see me use in this video are not my methods. They're just the ones that I currently use. For example, the undercook and hold method has taken inspiration from people like Aaron Franklin and Goldie's Barbecue and Jeremy Yoder. Chud's Barbecue, Leroy and Lewis, Wayne Miller, Texas Monthly articles that interview pitmasters hundreds of other sources, and my own experiments and experience from being a full-time barbecue content creator who cooks hundreds of briskets. I do my best to cite all of my sources and give credit where it's due, but I'm not perfect and sometimes I either forget or the situation just isn't as clear cut as you might think. So just wanted to get that off my chest. I'm not trying to take other people's ideas and pass them off as my own, but if you see something in my videos that looks like that's what I'm trying to do, let me know in the comment section below and I will fix it. All right, back to the video. So to illustrate the undercooked and hold method. This is a brisket that probed pretty tender at around 195 degrees internal, but you can see it's still bouncy like a football and I can't really get my fingers into the fibers. This is a slightly undercooked brisket and if I pull it now and rested it for just two hours, like the traditional way of cooking a brisket, it would be too tough. But by holding it at 150 until dinner the next day, which is when most people eat their briskets, according to a survey that I did of my audience, the long hold of 18 to 20 hours finishes it off and it means I don't have to check for tenderness, it just means I pull it, I put it in the holding oven, and I'm done until the next day at dinner. Now, by comparison, here's a brisket that came up to 200 degrees. I'm probing it with my Chef's Temp Final Touch X10, which is the sponsor for this video, and an excellent and very accurate instant read thermometer that I highly recommend. I'll link it in the description section below if you guys want to pick one up. As I probe it with the Final Touch X10, the brisket is probing tender, and when I flip it over, the fibers are yielding to my fingers. You can see how I can kind of poke my fingers in between the fibers. Let's call this traditional fully cooked probe tenderness. I could rest it a few hours and slice into it and it would be perfectly tender. Now, a lot of people argue that this is really inconvenient and it overly complicates cooking brisket because who wants to wait another 18 hours before you can eat your brisket? I would argue that it makes it more convenient because you don't have to 
go to probe tenderness. You just go to 195, which is slightly undercooked, and it would have taken you an additional hour, even two hours to get to probe tenderness. So right there, I'm saving one or two hours. And then I don't have to rest the brisket down for one or two hours to 150 to 170 degrees Fahrenheit to prevent it from overcooking before I put it in the holding oven because it's already slightly undercooked. I can just put it right in the holding oven and that long gradual decline in temperature all the way down to 150 is going to help it come to the perfect tenderness. So I save another one to two hours there. That is a maximum savings of four hours, which means that I don't have to get up early or stay up late. I can cook a brisket during a regular workday and I let the holding oven do the rest of the work. It makes life actually manageable for a full-time YouTuber like me who's literally cooking briskets every day. And I also have a life. I gotta put my kids to bed. I gotta be there for my family. I gotta go drop off my kid and pick him up from daycare. I can't be getting up at four in the morning every day or staying up until three in the morning every night. So that's why this method works so well for me. What if I'm cooking 20 briskets? It doesn't matter. As soon as each one hits 195, I take them off, I wrap them, I put them in the holding oven. What if it's getting late and the briskets aren't even close to 195? They're only like 170, doesn't matter. I'll just pull them off, I'll wrap them, I'll put them in the holding oven and the holding oven will get them to a decent consistency. They'll be tender enough. Maybe I'll bump the holding temperature up to 155 or 160 to get them more tender, but they're gonna be fine. And the method also has another benefit. It results in more water retention, so you get a juicier brisket. And importantly, it retains a lot of its beef flavor. All that beef flavor isn't washed out from overcooking and denaturing the F out of the muscle fibers. It's still there, it's beefy, it's prime ribby, it's steaky, it's sweet and delicious. So for me personally, with my lifestyle as a busy dad and my preferences for brisket, 195 is the perfect finishing temperature. That being said, when you pull when the brisket is slightly undercooked and then you hold it, it doesn't even matter if you're really holding it for 20 to 24 hours. It's never gonna get to the level of collagen rendering that you would get if you took the brisket all the way up to 200, 203 probe tenderness like you would get at a traditional Texas barbecue restaurant. So it's not as gooey and luxurious in the point, but the flat is super juicy and amazing. And the point is still really good, even though the collagen might be a little less rendered than what is considered the Texas gold standard of a brisket slice coming from the point of the brisket. So Texas barbecue restaurants favor collagen rendering. They favor the point over the flat. Often when you take the brisket up to probe tenderness and get that extreme collagen rendering in the point, you get a really dry and pot roasty overcooked flat, and I don't like that. And this is especially important if you're using a lower marbled brisket, like the ones that I use. I use Canadian AAA from Costco, equivalent to choice grade brisket. So you get ones that are really well marbled, and then you get the other side of the spectrum that are closer to select grade briskets that barely have any marbling on them. But this method works really well on leaner briskets because you're favoring the muscle fibers over the collagen and the fat that might not be there in a brisket to make up for the fact that you overcooked your brisket. But what if I'm wrong? What if there's a more ideal temperature that I could take my briskets to to kind of get the best of both worlds, to get a juicy flat that is delicious and not overcooked and get a really fully well-rendered point that is just the Texas grade A gold standard of brisket points. Should I take my briskets to probe tenderness at around 200 degrees instead of what I'm doing right now? That's what we're testing in this video. And yes, we just got to the beginning of this video because I was too lazy to go back and be more concise and edit all of my scripting. But I felt like I just really had to get those thoughts out. So I'm starting by seasoning both briskets. In this video, I'm using a bit of seasoning sauce as a binder, and then I'm applying a heavy layer of my Smoke Trails BBQ brisket rub, which you can get on Amazon in the US or Canada now, actually. It's available in Canada, finally. This rub has some excellent flavor and will give your brisket maximum bark and texture. I designed it with less salt, so you can go on super heavy with it. About half a bottle per brisket is what I do. Or you can just add more layers of different rub and kosher salt until the salt is to your liking. I was initially kind of self-conscious about how little salt I included in it because I wanted to go super heavy. But now that I've talked to more people, they really appreciate the ability to be able to add salt to their liking. They can go heavy with my rub and get a lot of texture and the right amount of salt, or they could do a layer of kosher salt and then a lighter layer of my rub and then maybe even Lowry's or something. They can season their briskets to their liking and because my rub has less salt in it, it gives them the ability to do that. Also, it has a lot of different ingredients in it. There's like beef based powder, there's MSG, there's grillin' flavor, which gives you a little bit of grilled meat flavor. There's also sumac in it, and I got this idea from Chef Ari. He's a pit master down in Texas that owns his own restaurant, and the sumac really darkens up the bark a lot faster than normal. I don't know why. My theory is that it has some natural sugars in it that kind of get released, and those sugars darken the bark up a lot more than normal. So there's a lot of cool stuff going on with it. Buy it, try it, let me know your thoughts on it. I'm always looking for suggestions on how to improve it. I'm now lighting up my Old Country Pits Gen 2 offset smoker. It has an insulated firebox, which makes cooking in cold weather an absolute pleasure and it uses less fuel so I'm liking it so far 
That being said, I don't really know how I feel about insulated fireboxes. I have to maintain a really small fire in this thing to get lower temperatures, and I'm talking like 300. I usually cook at either 250 or 300. To get 250, it's challenging. To get 300, it's even challenging because this thing, if the fire gets too hot because of that insulated firebox, it's like an incinerator. You could get it up to 500 or 600 in the cook chamber quite easily. So I don't think it makes fire management any easier, but you do save on fuel and it is a lot better in cold weather. I'm planning on doing a full review of that smoker later this year, but in the meantime, you can go check it out. I'll link it below. Now onto the side-by-side -side comparison cook. Both briskets are going onto the smoker at 250 degrees Fahrenheit for around four hours until they hit the stall. After they hit the stall, they look like this, some moisture sweating out of them. They can take some more heat. So I'm bumping temps up to 300 and they're going to cook for another two hours. I'm probing them with my Chef's Temp Final Touch X10 and it's telling me they're around 170 degrees internal. So I'm foil boating them to help them cook more evenly and I'm continuing to cook them at 300 degrees. 10 hours into the cook, the smaller brisket hit 200 degrees according to my Final Touch X10. It's probing really tender and you can see how I can kind of get my fingers into the fibers underneath. This is what I would consider done to probe tenderness. So I'm pulling it off, I'm wrapping it with ghee and lard, just because that's what I'm currently experimenting with and it's going in my holding oven at 150 degrees for the next 18 to 20 hours until dinner the next day. And two hours later, the bigger brisket finally hit at least 195 degrees internal everywhere I probed. Usually that's what I'm looking for. It might be 200 in some areas, but I need the lowest temperature to be 195 before I pull it. That's what I mean when I say at least 195 everywhere you probe. You can see how the top has some decent rendering and the bottom is still a little bit bouncy, but I can just barely start to poke my fingers through if I push hard enough. That's typically when I like to pull my briskets. This is the undercook and hold brisket for the sake of the comparison, and it's gonna get wrapped and put in the holding oven along with the other brisket. All right, guys, it is the next day, and I'm here with my mom, Josie. Josie, say hi to all of the smoke trailers out there. Hi, everyone. I'm really excited because I've never had my mom on one of my videos, so oh. you're now gonna be memorialized for all of time in my I'm videos. I'm honored, thank you. Okay, so mom, what I want you to do is just taste each of these briskets as I hand you the slices, and let me know what your favorite favorite one is, what you think about each slice, whether you notice any differences or not. What I want to do in this experiment is really dial in what type of method that I want to use going forward, whether the one I'm currently using is good or whether I want to tweak it a little bit. So I just want to get your honest opinion on which brisket tastes better okay. than the other one, okay? I'll be honest. So let's start with this brisket right here. I'll just give this a slice right about here. This is kind of a weird brisket because the meat cutter kind of took a big divot out of it. Mm. You can see that. Okay, let's take a look at this. I'll give you guys a close up. So let me look at that. That looks pretty good. What do you think? It's pretty juicy. <laughs> it looks pretty juicy. Yeah. Okay, let's start with the flat. Okay, so I'll give you guys a close up. Pull that apart, it pulls apart really easily. And I'll put this one here. So just remember that's the flat of brisket number one. And then, I'm just gonna put this over here. We'll do the point, and I'll just cut right through this. Start cutting some slices off here. We'll go four in, and then I'll show you guys what it looks like. So that's what it looks like. We'll pull that apart. Pulls apart really easily. So I'll put that there. Okay, and now here is the second brisket. I'm just gonna slice all of them up at the same time. This is actually a nicer shaped brisket than the last one. <laughs> so I'll give you guys a look. That looks really nice. What do you think of that one? It looks different. It looks, how does it look different? It's still juicy, but the, I don't know, the variegations in the meat look different. Yeah, in what mm -hmm. way? And well, sorry, what does variegations mean? That's a new term for me. <laughs> well, <laughs> the texture of it. The texture looks different. looks different? Yes, it does. In what kind of way can you, can you put it into words? It's denser. It's denser, okay. It's denser. Does it look juicier or drier? They both look juicy. Okay, some slices of the flat here. And I'll take another one, a little bit thicker. And I'll show you guys. So there is the flat, I'm gonna pull that apart. It pulls apart almost effortlessly. So that's brisket number two. That's brisket number one. Put that to the side. And now I'm gonna do one more slice. Okay, one, two, three, 
and four. And I'll give you guys a look at that. Pull it apart. Just falls apart like nothing. So let's start with brisket number one. So take, take a bite of this. This okay. is the first brisket that we sliced. Okay. I'm going to take a bite as well. It's a little dry, Stephen. It's a little dry? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good to know. I want honesty in this video, so that is perfect. I'm your mother. I don't lie. <laughs> so it's a little bit dry. Mm -hmm. Can you pull it apart? So it pulls apart pretty easily, it right? It pulls apart. But it's a little bit dry. A little bit dry. Okay, so now let's try the second flat. So this is the flat of the second brisket. So try that one now. You don't have to eat the whole thing if Thank you don't you. want to. I'm starving. <laughs> what do you think of that? It's not as tasty, but maybe I had a bit of the bark. It's um, it's a little more chewy. Okay. Is it dry? Like how does it compare to the last one? Like when the you... other one tasted better. Okay. Mm -hmm. In terms of like salt or beef flavor or like other flavors, was it the taste of the bark? I haven't really eaten the bark on this one, but I mm. like the other one better. Is there a certain reason that you're not liking this one as much? Does the flavor seem similar in any way to you, like something else, another type of beef that you may have tasted in the past? I'm kind of leading her a little bit here, but. It's, um, it's just chewier. Yeah. Than the first one, but uh -huh. not, I wouldn't say it's dry. It's just the, the texture is a bit, um, chewier. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the flavor on the first one was more palatable to me. Okay. I'm going to really ask a specific question now. Okay. In terms of like the beef flavor, did the second one taste more prime ribby, steaky to yes, you? Yes, it did. The second one did. It tasted more like the beef that I would cook. Oh, so you, okay. But so not, there's a difference. Not the beef that I would cook though. Okay. Yeah. So the second one, did it taste more like pot roasty and yes. overcooked beef? Yes. Okay. That's the flavor you're getting? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I was trying not to lead her, but a lot of people have difficulty picking up on that distinction. So, yeah. but you do recognize that. I do. And the first one was more like, more steaky, like. More smoky, more steaky. Yeah. And, it had um, some beef flavor. And the, the bark, the flavor was coming in through the bark. Okay. More flavor through the bark. Yeah. More beef flavor. I don't want to put words in your mouth, yeah. but like it was more like a steak than like a overcooked prime rib. That's right. Okay. So. I know that I am putting words in my mom's mouth, but I think that what I would say based on me tasting these is that the same holds true for all of my briskets. The ones that I only cooked up to around 190, 195, I kind of undercooked them and then held them for a very long period of time. They taste more prime ribby, steaky. They taste less like overcooked um, dry roast that your um, great grandmother would yes, have made. I'm you. not gonna say grandma. Thank you. I'm not gonna say grandma. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's move on to the point. The point is a separate muscle of the brisket and it's usually more fatty. Oh. This is the point number one. So taste point number one. It's a big piece. Very, very moist. Pulls apart easy. Mm -hmm. Flavor is very good. It's not dry. I like it. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. Very good. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's move on to point number two now. So this is point number two. So take a bite of that. Good thing I was hungry, Steve. Mm -hmm. Point number two. Mm. Wow. Mm. I'll give you guys a look here. What do you think of that? It's good. I like the other one better. Okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Why did you like the other one better? Hmm. More flavor, it felt like. Okay. And this is more, more texture to it, more fiber. Okay. I going, just like the, the piece of the other one better. Going back to the previous kind of analogy between pot roasty, like lack of beef flavor, lack of juiciness in the muscle fibers, are you getting any of that at all? Like any distinction between the two? No but you didn't like the second one as much because it's... It just feels a little chewier. Not okay. so much dry, but it just feels chewier. Like it doesn't fall apart in your mouth yeah. as much? Yeah, I really had to chew it Okay. before I swallowed it. And was that the same for brisket number two for the flat? Yeah. 
Okay, so it's chewier. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Okay. There's um, more? No, there's no more. That's it. <laughs> so o overall, would you say that you liked brisket number one or brisket number two better? Brisket number one. Okay, that's good to know. And yeah. is there any specific reason why you like brisket number it one? It was tastier. It was juicier. Um, the texture, it was easier to swallow. Okay. I didn't have to chew it as much. Yeah. And just the flavor was beautiful. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm going to take one more slice off of brisket number one here because you said that was a little bit dry and it does look like, you know, maybe the, maybe the flat got a little bit more heat. So let's just take a look here. So yeah, so I, I think that like if we pull that apart, it pulls apart easily, but it might be a little bit drier than the other one. Mm -hmm. Like if we look at the flat of this one, well, this kind of, this kind of shreds, which is an issue, but if we look at that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks kind of similar actually. Like, I it mean, it does. But it's kind of more pot roasty. They're both, I mean, they, they're both delicious. Yeah, they're both, they're both really good briskets. I think it's mm -hmm. like kind of splitting hairs, but mm -hmm. I think my opinion of these briskets is that I liked the flat better on brisket number one. It was a little bit drier than my briskets normally are, but that's mm -hmm. because this brisket was a little bit less marbled. Mm -hmm. Brisket number two had a little bit more fat marbling in it. Okay. Uh, brisket number one had less fat marbling in it. And I think that's why it got a little bit drier. It might have also been because I was pushing the fire temperatures later in the cook to try to get it cooked faster and get to bed last night. But usually they're a little bit more juicy than this one. This one still did have a lot of beef flavor though. And from what you said, it was less chewier than brisket number two, was. which was interesting. And brisket number two, it was more crumbly and fall apart in texture. And I think that chewiness is from the denaturation of the muscle fibers because it was cooked longer and it just dries out the muscles a little bit more and it, it's harder to swallow as okay. a result, right? But from cooking it longer, you're supposed to get more of that fat rendering and collagen rendering uh, to make it, to kind of even it out and make it more mm. juicy. But I don't think that that happened in this case. So I like the flat of number one. I like the point of number two better. But you said you like number one flat better. and point better That's totally. Right. I did. I personally liked, um, where is that one? It's right here, I think. Yeah, I like this. This is number two. That's number two point. And I thought that was really nice. Lots of good rendering. And this was... It's a little bit drier now, oxidized, but this was brisket number one point. And I think it had, again, a little bit more beef flavor, but I think it had more moisture. Like it was it easier did. to swallow. Yeah. Yeah. They're so both very, very good. <laughs> Thank you. You're not just saying that because I'm no, your son. But I do have a question. Did okay. you learn yeah. all this from me? No, I learned it all from the internet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't learn. Did I learn any cooking from you? <laughs> yes, you did. What did I learn? Pasta. All the, the Italian Daddy stuff. Sauce. Yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah. I don't not, do this kind of Not Texas-style brisket, though. No. This was, I, this I learned. Excellent. <laughs> I learned this on the internet. <laughs> yeah. So, conclusions. I don't think I'm going to change my method just yet. I think I'm going to continue to pull my briskets when they're slightly undercooked at around 195 degrees Fahrenheit after a typical 12 to 13 hour cook. I just like how it saves me time. It preserves the beef flavor and it produces a really amazing juicy brisket. And the flat is particularly juicy in most cases. There were some challenges in this cook because I pushed temperatures a little bit too far during the last part of the cook. And as a result, some of the edges of the brisket got a little bit more dry than I normally like. So do the briskets in this particular experiment reflect the perfect experiment where you pull a brisket at 195 and it's just undercooked versus a brisket where you pull it at 200 degrees and it's fully probe tender. Not exactly, but life is never perfect. And this experiment and my opinions based on it and all of the briskets I've cooked before are based on my current experience and the way that things occur to me right now. And that is the best I can do. And my opinion is always evolving as I gain experience and learn new things. But this is my opinion right now. And 
even though the experiment might not have been 100% ideal, the undercook and hold brisket was still better, in my opinion, overall than the 200 degree probe tender brisket. The flat was more tender, the point was totally acceptable, and my mom preferred that brisket. Now, I did prefer the point slices on the 200 degree probe tender brisket. They were just like really ooey gooey and reminiscent of some Texas barbecue restaurants that I've been to and that Texas gold standard of point slices. But I feel like to get that texture, you really have to risk drying out and overcooking your flat and getting it pot roasty to the point where I don't really like the flat slices anymore. And I put out a video last year where I basically put forth the argument that a lot of Texas barbecue restaurants do perfect point slices and amazing briskets, but they tend to overcook their flats. And it's an unpopular opinion. Anytime you say something about Texas barbecue, people are going to get angry about it. But that is just the way that things occur to me. It, it seems to me that that method tends to produce drier flats, even though it produces really good points. So I'm gonna continue to look for a perfect method that produces that ooey gooey Texas gold standard point while still preserving the beef flavor and the moisture of the flat. But right now I think the undercook and hold method is the best method that works for me personally. So what are some practical takeaways that you can use from this video to improve your next brisket cook? Well, if you're using the traditional method and you're just cooking your brisket and then resting it for two hours, you're not holding it overnight night or for 18 to 20 hours, then I recommend taking your brisket to probe tenderness. Usually that happens around 200 degrees, could be a little bit higher, it could be a little bit lower, it could be around 195, or in some cases, it could be 190 if you cook that brisket for a really long time, like you've done an 18 hour cook. But in my experience, for the most part, in a typical 12 to 13, maybe even 14 hour brisket cook, it tends to be probe tender at around that 200 degree mark. Now, if you wanna save time and you want a more convenient method that works better with your schedule and you don't wanna get up early or stay up late, you want a juicier flat, you want more of that prime ribby beef flavor preserved, then use the undercook and hold method. That's the method that I use and it works really well for me. It just might not produce that super ooey gooey fully rendered point, but to be honest, no one has ever noticed the difference. Everyone loves my briskets and no one is saying, oh, this brisket point is undercooked or anything like that. But if you don't care about the flat as much and you don't care if it gets a little bit overcooked or pot roasty or dried out potentially and you want to go for that Texas gold standard fully rendered point, then I would recommend going up to 200 degrees probe tender and then resting it down for about an hour so it doesn't overcook and then put it in the holding oven. You can go as low as 140. The brisket's already cooked at that point. And then hold it until lunch or dinner the next day and you'll get a really amazing brisket with that fully rendered point. So this video has been an absolute blast making, guys. And I just wanna reiterate that the way to tell when a brisket is done is by feeling it and probing it probe tenderness for the traditional method. And with the undercook and hold method, I want to take my brisket to about 95% of probe tenderness. But this video is kind of answering the question, what if you were really pressed to give an answer, Steve, about what is the exact precise temperature you need to pull your brisket off. And I did my best in this video to give you my answer and my philosophy on that subject. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next video. And until next time, happy smoking.